what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today I am super excited because we get to take a first look at the all new Raspberry Pi 5 it's not a joke Raspberry Pi 5 is here and this thing is awesome we've got a nice upgrade over the Raspberry Pi 4 I've spent about six days with the Raspberry Pi 5 and this is definitely a welcome upgrade so we actually didn't think we were going to get a new Raspberry Pi at least a new larger Raspberry Pi in 2023 and this came as a huge surprise to me. So the Pi Foundation is stating that this is two to three times more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4. And it comes down to the new CPU GPU combo they got going on with this SOC. It's actually a quad core Cortex A76 CPU running at 2.4 gigahertz out of the box. And that's paired up with the new Video Core 7 GPU running at 800 megahertz. So they're offering two different models at the time of launch. We've got a four gig model and an eight gig model. $60 for the 4 gig, $80 for the 8 gig. I've got the 8 gig here, and you can actually order it right now. I'll leave links in the description, and personally, I think this has been a long time coming, and I'm really glad to see a new, full-size, more powerful Raspberry Pi in 2023. In this video, we've got a lot to go over. We're going to take a look at the full specs. I've run some benchmarks. We'll test out Raspberry Pi OS and see how well that functions. We're also going to test some video playback, some gaming, and emulation on this board. But the first thing I wanted to show you was just a comparison between the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi 5. When it comes to the overall form factor, not a lot has changed. There are some components that have been moved around, and there's one that was removed. I kind of wish it was here, and if you take a look between the two, you'll notice that on the new Raspberry Pi 5, we do not have a 3.5mm audio jack. It looks like that space now contains another MIPI connector. So we've got two four-lane MIPI camera connectors here. We've also got the power over Ethernet header over here, and that's because we now have Ethernet on this side. So if you're looking at the board facing the USB, it's now on the left-hand side as opposed to the right on the Raspberry Pi 4, which means a lot of the cases that did work with the Raspberry Pi 4 just aren't going to function properly with the Pi 5. But when it comes to USB on the Pi 5, we still have two full-size 2.0 ports and two full-size 3.0 ports. PCIe 2.0 X1 interface. This is going to require a hat to connect your peripherals, but this is really awesome to see PCIe 2.0 on the Pi 5. It's still rocking USB Type-C for power in, but they've upped the requirements. They're actually stating we need a 5 volt, 5 amp power supply, so they do have new power supplies on the market. We've got a new RTC connector for a real-time clock battery and UART right in between micro HDMI. So we're still dealing with micro HDMI, but now with the increased power from the new CPU and GPU, we can do dual 4K displays with the Raspberry Pi 5. And along with the releasing the new Raspberry Pi 5, they've also released the new Raspberry Pi Active Cooler. And of course, since it's an active cooler, it does need power. We've got a new fan connector on the Raspberry Pi 5. This thing does look pretty beefy, and given the new power requirements for the Pi 5, I think this might come in really handy, especially given that we're running at a 2.4 gigahertz clock now on that A76 CPU. We've got the thermal pads pre-installed, ready to go, and it's actually super easy to install this new active cooler. We've got two holes in this PCB. We've got the snap connectors. It's just going to lay right on top of the board. Go ahead and snap it into place. And it is a PWM controlled fan, so we've got a new fan header over by the uh, USB 2 ports. We'll just plug this directly in, and I'm sure we'll see some software to allow us to control this. But it actually looks pretty good once it's all assembled. When it comes to the all new Pi 5, these are going to be priced at $60 for the 4 gigabyte model and $80 for the 8 gigabyte model. But we have that all new quad core Cortex A76 SoC running at 2.4 gigahertz. The new Video Core 6 GPU at 800 megahertz. It supports OpenGL ES 3.1 and Vulkan 1.2 out of the box. At the time of launch, we've got a 4 and an 8 gigabyte model, but both of them are utilizing LP DDR4X. Dual band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0. The micro SD card slot does support high speed SDR 104 mode for high speed SD cards. We've got gigabit Ethernet with power over Ethernet. That all new PCIe 2.0 X1 interface, which is going to come in really handy. Personally, I can't wait to see what Jeff Gearling does with this. It's going to be absolutely amazing. It's got the standard Raspberry Pi 40 pin GPIO layout and something brand new here for the Raspberry Pi. We've got a physical power button on the Pi 5. Okay, so here we are with Raspberry Pi OS on the Raspberry Pi 5. 
Uh, real quick, we'll just run NeoFetch. As you can see, we've got the Pi 5, Model B, Revision 1.0, Kernel 6.10, LXDE Desktop, as you can see here, and we've got the 8 gigabyte model, and this will clock up to 2.4 gigahertz stock. Now, I haven't done any overclocking just yet. I will save that for another video because I think we'll be able to take this up quite a bit, but I wanted to show you what it would do in its stock form factor. So first things first, this definitely feels a lot snappier than the Raspberry Pi 4, and I know there's been a lot of updates to the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm sure we'll see performance updates with the Raspberry Pi 5, but if you're used to using that, you will notice a difference. I mean, everything just loads up a lot quicker. The Pi Foundation states that the Raspberry Pi 5 is two to three times faster than the Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, they didn't specify GPU or CPU, but I did run some benchmarks on both. First up, we've got Speedometer 2.0. This is a browser speed test. Basically, it just kind of refreshes and reloads a new page. Per minute, the Pi 4, 27.8. The Pi 5, 64.1. So we've got a nice jump in performance there. Next up, we've got a simple GPU test using Open Arena. So this is the time demo on the Raspberry Pi 4, same exact settings here, averaged 41 FPS. On the Pi 5, 60 FPS. And for some reason, I couldn't unlock that frame rate to get it any higher, but I think it will go there. And the final one we have here is Geekbench 5. On the Raspberry Pi 4, single core coming in at 239. Not great, multi, 711. On the Pi 5, single core 612, multi 1617. Looking pretty good so far, and it's still a bit early. Both of these were at the stock clocks, and of course with the Pi 5, we've got a higher clock CPU. I will run some overclock benchmarks in the future, but let's go ahead and test out some more real world stuff. Another area I've noticed a huge speed increase is just overall web browsing. So we're going to head to, let's say, uh, Raspberry Pi's website. See what happens here. Not speeding this up. This is real time. Yeah, this is awesome. So let's check out their hardware. At the time I'm making this video, it is not up on their website, but if you go there right now, it should be there. YouTube. Took a second, but yeah. It's getting the job done. I gotta say, this is really quick. But you know, since we're here, we might as well test a little bit of YouTube video playback. So we're gonna head over to Big Buck Bunny. We're just gonna go to 1080p, full screen it. I'll give it a few seconds to kind of buffer out, and we'll see how well it works. So before I turn on Stats for Nerds, I just wanna take a look at this. I've tested this on every single board computer I've ever reviewed. And basically, right at this beginning part, I can already see a little bit of hitching going on. So we are dropping some frames here. I'm not sure how many. Definitely doesn't look as bad as the Raspberry Pi 4, but I think it's quite a few. Let's check it out with Stats for Nerds. And yeah, so 1080p 60 with uh, Chrome right now is dropping quite a few frames. But to tell you the truth, I mean, it's really not too bad. If I didn't have stats for nerds on, I'd be totally content watching this at 1080p 60. And of course, we have to take a look at some gaming and emulation. So I've actually installed some emulators. Unfortunately, I can't get the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii to run or PS2 just yet. Just won't launch no matter what I do. But I've got a ReDream so we can test out some Dreamcast upscaled and some PSP using PPSSPP. Now one game I really wanted to test here was Doom 3, so I've got the demo installed. This is at 600 by 800 and we've got a low medium mix going on. FPS is up in the top left hand corner, looking pretty good like this and at 720p we can average around 45 FPS. So right now, you can see it does dip down every once in a while, and at 720p, when we get into these big corridors, it drops down to around 14 FPS, but then picks right back up. So some more driver optimizations for this new GPU are definitely needed, but it's really awesome to see it running this well.
Next on the list is some emulation testing, and I haven't even tested RetroPie. I've just been using Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, I'm sure it'll work in the future if it's not already working at the time I'm making this video. But we're going to go with... Oh, I got ReDream somewhere else here. So we'll test out some Dreamcast emulation. So yeah, with ReDream, it's looking pretty good here. And you know, in the past, I've actually had really good luck with Flycast also. That's definitely a video I want to dive into. I'd like to install as many emulators as we can, maybe run some Botocera or uh, RetroPie on this unit and see what we can really do. But right now, the Pi 5 is handling Dreamcast quite well. And you know, we've got to test out some PSP. I'm going to be using the standalone version of PPSSPP. And this is actually an older build. This is the only one I could get to work. So we don't have Vulkan support with this one, but I'm sure we will get Vulkan support once more people get their hands on the Pi 5. But we're at 3x resolution with Tekken Dark Resurrection, OpenGL back in, no frame skip, load right in here. And you can see this game runs amazingly at 3x resolution. Personally, I can't wait to see what the community does with the Raspberry Pi 5 and emulation. I think uh, we've definitely got a nice little powerhouse here. Of course, it's not the most powerful SPC on the market, but there's one last PSP game that I want to test here, and that's going to be Chains of Olympics. You know we had to go to it. And here it is at 1x resolution. Again, OpenGL back in. It's doing a lot better than it ever did on the Raspberry Pi 4, but we do get some dips. You'll see it start to dip in just a second. Now at the very beginning of this game, it was good to go. There weren't as many characters on screen. We had a steady 60, but you can see it dips down and then kind of goes right back up. Still, with it being so early, definitely looks like we've got a nice little emulation upgrade with the Pi 5 also. Okay, so my first impressions of the Raspberry Pi 5, this is definitely a welcome upgrade over the Raspberry Pi 4. With the time I've spent using the Pi 5, everything just seems to be a lot faster on it, and rightly so. I mean, we've got a brand new board here with a more powerful SoC. Price is going to be a factor for a lot of people, given that at launch, they're only launching the 4 and the 8 gigabyte model. Priced at 60 and 80 respectively might be a bit high for some people, but maybe in the future we'll see, you know, the 2 gig or maybe even a 1 gig. I'd actually love to see a 16 gig Raspberry Pi 5 hit the market. I think that would be absolutely amazing. I've got a lot more videos coming, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. I'm definitely going to be testing out some more emulation here. I want to get Dolphin installed and PS2. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at the Raspberry Pi 5. If you're interested in learning a little more, maybe pick one of these up. I'll leave some links in the description. And again, if there's anything else you want to see running on the Pi 5, just let me know down below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.